Is the future of the growth of industries in sub-Saharan Africa predicated on the trajectory of telecommunications? Vitiva Capital Management has released a maiden telecommunications report on the sub-Saharan region that looks at some of the opportunities present in sub-Saharan Africa, drilling down to select economies which include Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, and Angola. The author of the report, telco analyst Victoria Ejugu, joins us now to discuss further. Victoria, good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So, uh, look, as far as the telecommunications sector is, is concerned, how integral is it to the growth of, of other sectors, considering how many of these businesses rely on um, telco services? Um, good morning to you, Tourosos, and thanks for having me today. Um, so, like you rightly said, uh, the, the telecommunications sector is really integral to um, the growth of other sectors, and that's because... Um, their productivity is hinged on connectivity, and which we know the telecom sector provides and facilitates, um, both offline and online. Um, they facilitate internet access, and you need that for um, information transfer, information sharing. Um, we also have voice services in which they provide. Um, that's good for offline conversations. And so just because of that, we think that the telecom sector is an enabler of all other sectors. All right. Your report says the global telco industry, I think the figure is $5 trillion, um, $5 tr dollars, $5 trillion dollars with a compound annual growth rate of, what is that figure, 12, no, 10%. Yeah, so what, what are the triggers as far as, where, as far as this valuation and where things are going with this growth, with the CAGR? Um, so there have been a couple of factors that has driven the sector thus far. Um, the first is the world population. Um, so we have seen world population grow to about 7 billion now, and that has driven subscriber growth. Um, there's also been economic adv advancements in the global economy. And because of that, we've seen improved income levels, and um, that has driven demand for telco services. And we also have the proliferation of mobile devices and its adoption. Mm. Um, so when you bring a combination of these three factors, um, we can, that explains why we've seen burgeoning demand for telco services, and in turn, we've seen um, strong revenue growth from these um, operators. Um, looking ahead, um, we still expect um, more subscriber growth. Um, the World Bank projects um, 2% annual growth rate for the world um, population. Mm. Um, there's also the internet that is supposed to drive um, revenue growth for these telco providers. Great stuff. For s drilling down to sub-Saharan Africa, though, what about the for the, for the region? What about the growth triggers um, there? So the story is not too different for sub-Saharan Africa. Um, we have a huge population here. That means that there's a huge market to be served. Um, there's also um, strong adoption of smartphone devices. Um, smartphone ad affordability has also driven um, its ad adoption. Um, we also have a, demogra a demographic profile that is characterized as young and growing. Uh, so these are the young digital natives that are supposed to drive subscri subscriber growth. Um, and then there's also a burgeoning need to stay connected. Um, so for Sub-Saharan Africa, that's been the trick and that will continue to be the trigger in the mid to long term. Great stuff. Um, we've been talking about telcos or telecommunications as a lifeblood for other industries. What about the lifeblood for telcos itself? There's a couple charts um, on internet penetration on the, on, from your report. Is that the lifeblood of the kind of growth that we're trying to see for the, for, or rather the lifeblood for the sector itself? Yes, I would say that that's the lifeblood for the sector itself. Um, the world is experiencing a digital shift. Um, because of that, the need to access the internet has taken on um, greater significance. And so just moving ahead, there will be more and more. The only, the only way, up, the only way for um, demand for data is upwards. Um, we have a young digital native that are going to drive um, internet demand. Um, we also have so, um, population growth, urbanization. And so all that is supposed to drive um, demand for the internet, and um, that will continue to go upwards. If we look at that chart, there's still, I think, Sub-Saharan Africa um, still, lie, yeah, so 46% versus Europe, Greater China, Latin America. That, that, are you optimistic for growth as far as the, that, that region? To, I, don't know if, I don't know if I should be asking if it's going to match up <laughs> with the others, but um, yeah, I mean, that number has to go up. It, yeah, it definitely. Doesn't. It has to go up. It just shows that the market is underserved. Right. And what you've seen is telcos are trying to tap into that to, you know, increase their network coverage rates. Mm. And because of that, trying to make network available at every nook and cranny of the region. Yeah. Um, so we believe that if they continue to do that, so we'll continue to see expansion of the sector in sub-Saharan Africa. If you're driving around Lagos, you'll see some colorful cables uh, around there. I think there's, there's, there's an acceleration there in connectivity. Um, data versus 
voice revenue. I think we got a chart from there on your report as well, where um, where you're seeing the data. Uh, there it is. Yeah, telco seeing consistent growth in their data business. Is this? going to, I don't know why you put AT&T versus Airtel and MTM, but it's growing. Either way, it's growing. It's growing. So it, does that trend continue as, I guess, the triggers you've mentioned prior, population growth and so internet penetration, does that data um, uh, revenues outstrip voice uh, for those players? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, we spoke to um, internet penetration still remaining low in sub-Saharan Africa. So that just shows that the market is underserved. And so, like I said earlier, as telcos continue to tap into this and increase their network coverage, you see more and more people trap, um, tap into availability. And it's only the only way, of, it's, it's only upwards that we see for data revenue at least in the midterm is voice still important though as far as a component for revenue for the for the players uh, compared to data yeah you can say that voice is still important but generally we expect slowing growth from that segment mm. and the reason for this is simply the internet you know there's now a growing preference for internet calls whatsapp calls right yeah so that WhatsApp should... has ads on youtube telling exactly. people to use whatsapp to make phone calls yeah. so th that should affect growth for voice but overall it's still important we still have people that are offline that would mm. still want to connect. So yeah, we'd, we'd see slowing growth from there and then the internet takes on um, the larger share of revenue. Great. As far as stocks, telco stocks, your report, uh, which again you authored, says that these stocks are undervalued. So there's some possible, what's, what's the explanation with, with, behind that for the undervalued um, stocks, or for um, telco stocks? Right. So when you talk about valuations, there are two things that come, in, come into play here. Um, what's the performance of this company right now and what's expected performance in the, in the future? Um, so when you look at telcos in sub-Saharan Africa, they've been able to um, post strong growth, stronger growth than their global peers, superior profitability. And then looking at the future, because of um, our low penetration rate, you know that there's a huge opportunity for them. Mm. And that should mean that they should demand, um, they should demand stronger valuations. But that that's not been the case. I think they're they're trading around 52% um, discounts to their global peers. Mm. And so just because of this, we believe that there's like uh, there's a further room for upward movement in share price of these companies. Okay, very interesting. Um, what about challenges to the sector as far as what we're, the challenges that they're facing? Um, so there are a couple of challenges we see that would affect um, their operations. Um, one is regulatory challenges. We've seen policies come in and um, affect subscriber growth. To say the least. Yes, we've seen that in Nigeria. <laughs> we've seen that in Kenya. Yeah. So we believe that there might be policies that may, might hinder growth for them, but overall they've proved to be resilient and you know that shouldn't be a cause for alarm. Yeah, yeah. Um, any outlook for Q4 festive period? People flying in, maybe more phone calls, concerts, people sharing pictures. Q4 outlook, and I guess maybe for 2023, 2023 is not too far out. Um, so like I stated earlier before, I think telcos right now in Sub-Saharan Africa are focused on trying to increase penetration rates and make network more available. And so as they try to do that, as they try to do that, we believe that some people will continue to tap into their, avi to their network availability and that should drive growth for Q4 and even 2023. Great stuff. Victoria Jugu, uh, great report. I read it last night. Uh, very engrossing stuff. Lots of numbers and charts. As I, like, I like charts and numbers in your reports. Vetiva Capital Management, uh, telecommunications analyst. We appreciate you coming on. Thanks.